Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about, is having the chamber CNC ported worth it? Um, let me talk about everything with it and we'll show some of the results and things. This is a Brodex IK 200cc hit. Now this one's a 180, but the chambers are the same. Um, this one is as you would get most of your IK heads. They will look exactly like this and that's how they are. Now I flowed exact set of Brodex IK 200 heads out of the box, just like this. And now I have the CNC chamber version and I'm gonna flow those and compare them. Now there's some, there is a bunch of advantages to the CNC chamber one, well, some of them. One of the things you gotta think of is usually whenever you have the chamber CNC ported, all chambers end up being the same CCs. However, in my experience, that's not always the case. Because of the way the head's set in the mill, or how it's set up, occasionally, now this is not all the time, you can have this chamber be, say, 64, and this one could be, say, 65, a 1cc variant. Now, in general, that doesn't happen, but I have seen it. And the reason why is the head was just tilted in the machine, so one of the chambers gets machined more than the others. And that happens. Does it happen all the time? No, it's rare. So the, one of the things I'm pointing out is the idea thing with the CNC chambers is all the chambers should be exactly the same and exactly the same CCs. That's one of the good things. An ASCAS chamber, you can have some variances. However, it sounds like you'd have a bunch, like maybe this would be 64 and this would be 60. In my experience, it's usually not more than one or two. So if this was 64, this one might be at the lowest 62. By the way, usually do end to ends. For whatever reason, like I told you, from probably from the way they mill them and stuff, or even the way it's cast, usually that's what's happened. It's not gonna be 64, 60, 64, it doesn't, usually it's, it gradually gets bigger or smaller as you go down the head. Um, same thing happens with this, just that's from being in the mill though. Now, that's one advantage of the CNC chambers is, typically the chambers are all gonna be the same size, exact same shape, and CCs. As cast, not so much. Here's the bigger advantage though. This is how the IKs come. You see this lip here? You can go back and watch several of my other videos and I've talked about this lip hurts airflow because air is coming off here. It hits this lip and what it does, it shoots it back into the stream or the area with the valves open and it blocks off part of it. So making the actual area look smaller than what it is, the head ends up flowing less until you get to really high lifts where this is far out of the way. This especially hurts low lift low. Now in another video, I also showed you how you can fix this by doing it yourself. You can hand port these and I've done several. I charge $200 to do it and it fixes all of this and it ends up look really nice and it does pick up flow and there's a video you can watch of it. This does the same thing. It's just done on a machine. This runs $300 or about $300 to have done from Brodix. So if you're a Brodix dealer like myself or if you're trying to get a set of heads, and you've got some IK heads and you're wanting the chamber CNC ported, it is an option. Just let us know upon ordering. Um, we're gonna flow it and see how much it actually changes on the flow because it should pick up, because if you notice, that ridge is gone and that's what restricting the flow. The chamber really looks nice, by the way. Good work. So we're gonna see if it's actually worth it. So I'm gonna go pop it on the bench, flow it, and we can compare it to how it looks compared to the ASCAS chamber version of this IK200. Here are the results. So we're gonna see, does CNC chambers make it better or not? Right here is the ASCAS chambers for the IK200. This is the CNC ported chambers only. And you get to see the difference. We're gonna go through them. At 400, it went from 224 for the ASCAS to 238. Good pickup right there. I'll pan out so you can see better. At 600, it went from 256 to 262 so not much there but if you look at the lower lifts that's where it really shines look at 200 126 to 146 so a 20 cfm gain there now on the exhaust side not quite as much at 400 make sure i'm looking at it right here 156 to a, uh oh it flowed less no sorry it flowed slightly more 160 so Slight pickup there, and at peak, 167, 166 to uh, 170. So 
slightly better on the chain on the exhaust side but a lot better on the intake side except for at peaks if you notice the peak lift one there is 262.5 262.1 so at peak lift at 700 it's really not much of a difference so the reason why is the valve's more out of the way it's um, less shrouded by the chamber work which i kind of described so definitely better down low with the cnc chambers than non so that answers that part now, if you stuck around on this end, you guys know that sometimes I give you bonuses. Here's your bonus. Now, some person on Speed Talk, which is a popular forum, had asked, can you flow uh, the dual plane on a head that flows less? Because I had done this dual plane. This is the Summit one. It doesn't have a ga gap, but it is port matched. And I had floated on other heads, and on the last set of heads, the heads itself flowed like 330. And this thing went 294. So it seems like it should move 294 CFMs and everything should be great. This head, as you just saw, flows 263 CFM at peak. Okay, so attaching this and flowing it through this, this is an 870 CFM uh, sniper throttle body. And I've taped up the bottom ports and then of course, since the valve springs are on, it's all blocked off. It's only pulling air through the bottom right here. For the record, I also float it with this intake. This is the Speed Warrior. Um, it's got the air gap design. The biggest difference is this one is not port matched, and this one is. So I think they're actually the same thing. Some several people have said it's someone just puts their logo on it, but it's a Y end. So anyway, I float them both, and here's where things get a little interesting. Remember, it flowed 294 CFM with the head that flowed 330. So you would think this head flowing 260, it should keep up just fine. Everything's golden. You would think wrong. Here are the results for that. This is where it's going to get weird. So here's our CNC chambered head, just with the, uh, uh, this entry, flowing with that on it. Here is a Speed Warrior intake right out of the box. And you can see how much it knocked off. So it went from a 192 to 182, lost 10 CFM. Look at four. Woo, painful. And it gets more painful because it actually drops and starts coming up, which is kind of weird. It never did that before when it was flowing in the port, but it did it there. So that's a little strange, but it did it with that one. Flowing at best, 228 CFM. This is that intake. Like I said, I think it's still the YN one. The only difference is this one's port matched to a 1206, and those heads are a 1206. So if you noticed, it was better than this one for sure there, better, it's better everywhere, but it's still not near as much as that, which is kind of strange because remember when the head that flowed 330, it flowed 294. 233 on a head that flows 262. So there's some more information for you. Now, I do have to say something else since you stuck around. Um, things have been really busy in the shop and I'm gonna kind of show you why. And just because you stuck around, I might as well give you some more information. That. This engine, I'll give you a little history on it, and it's not quite finished. I'm waiting for the paint. This engine is the engine I used in the 2012 Engine Master Challenge. This is that 406. It has my 10X RI heads on it. And a nice intake and everything else. The engine, when it was done from Engine Masters, after I got done with it, I kept it for like a year or so, then I sold it, and the guy ran it in his full-size truck for years, did a lot of stuff with it. Well, it came in for a rebuild a year and a half ago almost, so it's taken me forever just to get this done, and because of that, I actually had someone else assemble the short block. Um, I just put on the heads and everything else that went with it. Did change some things from Engine Masters, the way it worked. For one, this is a different pan, kind of a paint in the rear it's got a nice kick out on the side that was illegal in engine masters by the way you couldn't have a kick out pan like that um the other thing is the cam specs changed so for instance the intake duration went from a 244 now it's a 248 the intake duration went from a 246 to a 256 so um quite a bit change on the exhaust side lobe separation went from a 104 to a 108 and here's the biggest the lift went from a 650 lift because in the time it ran on the engine masters, you couldn't run more than a 650. It was a 650 lift before, now it's a 750 lift. The heads themselves had a little bit more work 
The valves are the same size at 215 by 1600, but they do have 5 16 intake stems now instead of 11 30 seconds. Try to reduce some weight. The head's also got some more port work done to them. They flow about 10 CFM better. Could have made them flow a lot more, but not for this target. Compression ratio pretty much stayed the same. Um, the only thing is I don't like is the cylinders were, like I said, I had someone else assemble the short block, but looking at it, it looks like there's quite a bit of clearance. It's like probably at the end of this, it probably needs another bore, but it is what it is. The other thing that's changed is the intake. The last intake had a lot of epoxy in it and it was starting to come out. This is a Brodex MS-91, which you see me flow attached to this head in a different video. A lot of port work on the inside and it should do pretty good. However, this thing has been chewing up my time left and right. So I still have to mask all this off and paint. Now, some of you guys paint before. I don't do that because that powder seems that no matter what you do, gets on your hand. It's always wait till I'm done. Um, but this thing will be on the dyno hopefully soon. There's still some couple of issues, one being this. The valve cover's hitting the intake. Um, yep, the joys. I know you're never gonna have this happen if you didn't run this 10XRI head. But yes, that's a problem. So, oh boy to me. Anyway, this should get on the dyno hopefully and runs well, I'm hoping. Um, this thing has been kind of a pain. So, and I, here's the reason why I don't build engines anymore. One, they take up so much time. This thing takes forever. A lot of guys get to throw it together and I don't know how it works. I'm so picky on everything. But it's got so many things that makes me nervous on it right now, which anybody else would be like, it's nothing to worry about, but I worry. Um, anyway. I'm hoping you get to see a video of it running and doing well in the dyno and nothing went wrong. Yeah, break my heart if something goes wrong, but man, you just never know. So it'd be a good combination, should run well, I hope. So if it, if everything stays together, everything goes well. By the way, it's got a SCAT 4340 crank, one of those super light weight ones, CP pistons, SCAT rods with uh, ARP 2000 cap screws. If it, if nothing goes wrong, it should make some pretty good power. The dyno was on last time, right after Engine Masters, and changed to a 950 carburetor because of the Engine Masters you can run on 750. Um, it made 662 horsepower on 91, but it made a ton of torque, like 616. However, that was on a dyno that read kind of high. The home, the dyno I'd used before Engine Masters, and that was with a 750 carb, though it made 622 horsepower and 570 foot pounds of torque. At the Engine Master Competition, it made 616 horsepower and 576 torque. Again, that was with the 750 carb though. The 950 carb, I'm sure, pumped it up a little bit, but the dyno we're going back to is the one that reads high. So we're gonna go back there again, just because that one we've already used, just to kind of get a comparison and see if it's better or worse. Anyway, and then back in the vehicle, of course. Well, anyway, so thanks for sticking around in the end, but this thing's been chewing up my time. Got And customers, for all of you that are waiting, I'm working as hard as I can. Like there's not enough hours in the day. This is like two or three in the morning working on. Only because a year and a half, I feel so bad for the guy. Um, lucky he's been patient, but man, this pays the bills. This just takes a lot of time. Anyway, you guys take care. Um, hope you get to see some time this on the, on the dyno soon.